Hello and welcome to another episode of the Launch Lounge podcast. This is a bonus episode and I'm sharing with you an interview I had with my friend and colleague Brad Bizjack. Brad is telling you his story of how he went from broke and in debt to creating a multi seven figure business and putting his family first all the while doing so. I want you to join Brad's Success Accelerator Challenge and you can do that by going to the launchlounge.com forward slash success challenge. But by all means, listen to Brad's story and then go and join Brad's Success Accelerator Challenge. Here's my interview with Brad. to see you. Welcome to the Launch Lounge podcast. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so grateful to be here, my friend. It's so good to serve your people. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. Oh, and it's a delight for me to have you serve my people because I know what an incredible heart of a servant you have. What a, is that the right words? How ready you are to serve always. And um, <laughs> it's that it's that gratitude that just glows from you all the time that I love so much, that I have come to love so much in the many, many years that we've known each other. Gosh, how many years have we known each other? Six years now. Six? I think six years now. Something like that. Something like that. I think it's even more from that very first call we have. Can I just tell the listeners our very first call? Yeah, of course. Can I tell you what I remember? I remember an early morning. I don't know why I feel like it was dark outside. I was still living in Perth. Because I remember sitting in our, like our little TV room, our little theater room, uh, which was a dark room anyway. And it must have been early in the morning because I was doing uh, early morning calls with Americans back then (laughs) um, because of time zone differences. And I remember you approached me to run some ads for you and you told me what you were doing at the time. And I said, well, I don't think you're quite ready for ads, but come back to me in a few years. And it always... It always hurts when I have to say that because, you you know, especially back then, I think that was like 2017 maybe Mm because 2017, 2018, because you think, oh, is this guy going to come back? And then a couple of years later, you came back and man, you had it figured out. You had it figured out. And over the course of three, four years, I have had the absolute joy of watching your business just grow and grow and grow and blossom. So what a full circle moment. I love having you. Tell me what it's been like for you this last five, six years since we, since we met the first time. You know, it's, it's amazing how you look back and I think a lot of people do this. They get so caught up in between the idea of where they are and where they want to be. Right. And I get there too. I'm like, I want to grow this business and create this, you know, amazing thing. But it's very rare that people look back at how far they've come. And Mm. so looking back at the last five years, it's been some of the most transformative, personal Mm. development focused Mm. years of my life. The beautiful thing about business is that it forces you to grow personally. Like you won't succeed unless you do. Um, So it's been an amazing blessing. I've loved every minute of it. And I can't wait to share the story and all that stuff. But it's it's been a really wonderful experience. I remember that call. Yeah, because you, I, I was in a place where I was like, yes, we need to do ads. But you said something that really impacted me. You said, uh, great advertising can't solve a marketing problem. And it changed the way that I viewed business. I had to learn the marketing side of things because I could have the best craft all day long to be able to help people shift their mindset yeah. and break limiting beliefs. But if the marketing wasn't figured out, it wasn't going to be there. So thank you for that amazing gift. Well, you are welcome. And I say it all the time. It's like the best marketing does not solve it. The best ads do not solve a marketing problem. Uh, and it causes so much headache, so many heartache for a lot of people when they do hire someone to run ads for them, but the marketing isn't dialed in. So that's, I'm quite passionate about that. And it, maybe it's a bit counterintuitive, but, but it works for me. And, you know, people come back like you, you came back. Yeah, and you were you stuck said, with well, me. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck with you. I love being stuck with you. Um, and I love watching what you do. So speaking of the story, I want to know how did you stumble upon all these incredible things that you're teaching people now to rewire their brains? Because I know 
I know things weren't always easy for you. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, there's been financial ups and downs. There's been emotional ups and downs. There's been relational ups and downs, relationship ups and downs, parental ups and downs, all the things. So, so tell me Brad's story. Tell me how you got to be such a positive light that just wants to spread positivity and gratitude and, and, and optimism and, and yeah, all the beautiful things that, that, that you're so passionate about. Tell me the story. Absolutely. So, you know, when I graduated college, I was $92,000 in debt. I grew up with so, yeah, it was a lot, so much debt. It was crippling. And just the thought of it was like, how the heck am I ever going to do this? And I had a lot of pain from growing up and childhood Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And a lot of limiting beliefs, a lot of fears, things like I'll never be enough. Money Mm -hmm. was this big, uh, Mm -hmm. if there was a feeling of scarcity consistently, right? Like there was too much month at the end of the money. And if you didn't earn a lot of money, you couldn't be happy. And so Mm -hmm. when I graduated college with all of this debt, I thought that money would solve the problem. And I got a Mm -hmm. corporate job that I absolutely hated getting out of Mm. school, thinking that that would solve the problem. And it didn't. I just kept getting Mm. more frustrated, frustrated, frustrated. And eventually I stumbled upon online business. I found that and I was like, that's the ticket. I Mm. I see all the stories of possibility and hope. And I want that so bad. I wanted Mm. to be able to change my financial circumstances, to get out of debt, to add avocado without having to worry about money. You know, (laughs) I wanted to... (laughs) I wanted to be able to do those things. But if I'm being totally honest, what I really wanted was to be the breaking point of mediocrity in my family history. I wanted to outrun my past. I wanted- hold on. There's a lot there. Break the pattern of mediocrity in your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I saw my dad always struggling, working 100-hour weeks to barely get by. I saw um, things with my mom where she- never really went after what she really wanted. And even though mm. they're amazing people, mm. they there was a lot of settling for mm. less than what they really wanted. And I was that person in my family where I was, I was determined to do something different, to make mm. a change from there, right? That's, that's kind of where that came from. And in addition, if I'm being totally honest, a lot of it came from not wanting some of the same emotional patterns mm. that happened when I was growing mm. up. A lot of pain, a lot of uh, frustration. There was trauma, a lot of stuff that happened when I was a child to happen mm. again when I had a family. Mm. Um, and so for me, I found business and that was the ticket, right? I was mm. so excited about this and what it could do. But there was just one problem. Nothing I tried worked, yeah. right? I would do all of the the webinars, I would show up to the calls, I'd read the books, listen to the podcast. It felt like I tried everything and I would Mm -hmm. start to get in my head. Is success not meant for me? Is it on the cards for me? I would see Mm -hmm. other people succeeding and I would take their success to mean my failure. And I would just struggle in this state of depression where I would I would literally be watching Friends reruns at 2 p.m., eating a plate of microwave nachos, feeling sorry for myself, and then getting pissed off at myself that I was depressed. And yeah. I knew something needed to change. And so, so you I- You weren't I, the results internally or externally. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. I was yeah. in a state of just desperation. It, it was almost like on some days I could get motivated to take action, but the standards I put on myself were just not sustainable. And so I would immediately follow those unmeetable standards with these feelings of escapism where I would just completely disconnect. And it was immediately followed by guilt. Like I'm not doing yeah. enough. And it yeah. would put me right back into that state of perfectionism. Yeah. Um, and it was a really tough place to be. And so yeah. when I eventually hired a mentor to help me with this, I remember on the very first call with her, I was telling her all the same things I just mentioned. I'm listening to the podcast. I'm reading the books. I'm taking the programs. Why isn't it working for me? And it's working Mm -hmm. for everyone else. And she calmly said that one of the most profound things I've ever heard. She said, Brad, you're so attached to success that you're missing the whole point. You're under the impression that you Mm -hmm. shouldn't be where you are right now. Business success and money isn't going to make you happy. You need to rewire Mm. your mind for happiness and gratitude Mm. if you ever want to achieve. 
And it changed the way that I looked at success because before Mm -hmm. I thought my life needed to change, my money needed to change, my bank account needed to change before I changed. And it's funny though, because I started to go all in on studying this. And I remember buying ticket to a a conference um, out in San Diego back in, I think, 2016. Mm. And I'm still at my corporate job trying to get this business off the ground. And the month before this conference, I had the plane ticket, had the hotel, all that mm. stuff. I got fired from my corporate job. <gasps> mm. And it was so I'm in the state of ninety two, ninety eight thousand dollars in debt now because I hired the coach. Mm. I have no income, I have no savings. But luckily I had that ticket. Yeah. And I remember landing in San Diego. Something pulled me there. And I remember going to the grocery store to buy peanut butter and jelly because I couldn't afford eating out at the time. I had back to my hotel room, check my bank balance like I did a hundred times a day at that point, And I overdrafted my account on peanut butter and jelly. And I walked into that conference, tail between my legs. And the topic that day was all about rewiring your mind, mm-hmm. shifting your belief system so that success became your default setting. And it changed everything about my life. And from that, we went on to generate millions and millions of dollars in business, Mm -hmm. serve tens of thousands of people all over the world. And now I have a almost four-year-old little girl and Mm -hmm. I get to be at every gymnastics practice, every soccer game, because I Mm -hmm. realized that rewiring your mind is the only way to create the success, freedom, and fulfillment you deserve. And now I am determined to help people bridge that gap way sooner than I ever did. And that's what it's all about for me. It's just helping people come alive to their limitless possibilities faster than I ever got to experience it. I have so many questions for you, but I do want to say one thing before I dive into the questions. I don't think I've ever met anyone. Like I hear the words you say, and I know I've heard those words a bazillion times in a bazillion different ways from a bazillion different people, but I have never met anyone who so consistently, and I've known you for years, so consistently lives from that definition of success, which is gratitude and appreciation. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, you cannot fake gratitude and appreciation over five years with someone, (laughs) you know, with someone you see. Joke's on you. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you've done that really well. Have you considered a career in acting? Um, That's, no, I, you know, we talk about success, but I, Can you tell me how you define success? That's a great question. Success to me is a life on your own terms. And I don't just mean Mm -hmm. finances because I think especially with entrepreneurs in the space, they think that once the money Mm -hmm. comes in, it's going to solve all their challenges. And I have lived this where you start Mm -hmm. making money, but there are things that are not healed internally. Yeah. And if those aren't healed, the money just amplifies what you're feeling inside. So a a life on your terms to me is that you obviously have the success and abundance, right? That type Mm. of thing, the the finances, the business, whatever your uh, Mm. achievement goals are, but you're also living from a state of emotional freedom Mm. where you're not attached to the outcome, where you feel Mm. fully alive on Mm. the path. And that's great to put in an Instagram quote card. It's about the journey, but actually living it. Yeah. is a totally different world that I think very few people ever achieve. And this is where you start to see people that have made all the money, mm. but their stress is all heck and they mm. aren't actually living a life of fulfillment. And so if you achieve, but you're not mm. fulfilled, that's failure. Mm. That's not success. And so it's about the achievement and the fulfillment. That's mm. a life on your terms. That's what I define yeah. as success. Oh, I love that. And that is so true because I, I think you're right. We, I think in our 20s, maybe it's a 20s thing, maybe, I don't know, but my, my, I resonate very much with your story and your and your experience in that in, in our 20s and maybe even for me into my 30s, it's also ego-driven. Mm-hmm. It's also uh, like success is something I can put a stamp on yeah. and success is something I can show. It's something... Um, other people give me. Yeah. It's something. Um, if that, if I get that person's approval, or if I make uh, this much money, or if I can have that accolade, then I'll check the box. And then you know, I don't know. You get to your forties, and you get to a place where you make 
tons and tons of money and you go, well, why am I still living from this place of feeling not good <laughs> enough, right? Yeah. And, and how do you, I want to know, how do you manage uh, things like stress and anxiety and depression and, you know, I was diagnosed with ADHD a couple of years ago after I had a uh, panic attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized, you know, after that, I realized how much anxiety there was attached to me, to the business. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I feel like there is a rewiring that happens when you learn to let go of the outcome. And like you say, to trust on, to look at how far you've come. Cause I think anxiety often feeds into what's next, what's next, what's next, what, what's the next big thing, you know? So how do you marry your, uh, what you teach and what you do with your students with, uh, I mean, even I'm 44 now, so uh, you know nothing about this, but perimenopause, like our mm-hmm. fucking hormones, are yeah. driving most 40 year old women nuts and it has an impact on that like how do we find fulfillment when our brains are running around like headless chickens headless chickens that is uh, a wonderful question and it's asked in a way that i get asked that question all the time but not as intelligent as you headless just chickens. Asked it. headless chickens um <laughs> It has to do with honoring reality and not resisting, right? So let's use the example of hormones, Mm. right? Like a reality. Let's Mm. use the example of business stresses, a reality. Mm. And I think what a lot of people do with anxiety is, because let's define anxiety in really simple terms, fear of the future, right? Mm. If you're focused on what's missing from your life, what you cannot control in the future, that's anxiety, right? Mm. And as someone that has had extreme anxiety, multiple Mm. panic attacks over the years, I've had to learn how to navigate this. Mm. And for the longest time, I didn't have a hold on it until I discovered that every emotion is a blessing. And. Oh, hold on. Don't go too fast over that. Every emotion is a blessing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. So I have this belief that life is rigged in your favor, that. Mm life's lessons will get louder and louder until you freaking pay attention. And at first you get dusted with a little feather and it's this nice little dusting and you're too busy though. You can't pay attention. Mm. So you brush it off and then life Mm. wants to get your attention and it ties a, it writes you a note and ties that note around a brick and it throws that brick through your living room window and glass shatters everywhere. And while the Mm. lesson is right there in your living room, you're looking at the glass that shouldn't have shattered. And because you're not learning the lesson, life keeps chucking these bricks through your window. And the next thing you know, you're looking around at everyone else. All their windows are intact and you're saying it's not fair. They don't understand what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And so life's like, you have to learn this to get to the next level. So it'll write that note on the front of a truck, honk its horn as it runs you over and you wake up in the hospital a couple weeks later and you have a choice, Mm -hmm. learn the lesson or blame the truck. And so to me, anxiety was like that for me, right? I think Mm -hmm. a lot of business owners that are trying to achieve really incredible things and serve a lot of people deal with this because they care so much. Mm -hmm. Well, when I realized that the lesson in these uncomfortable, I don't even want to call them negative emotions, Mm -hmm. uncomfortable emotions, Mm -hmm. because all emotions serve us, Mm -hmm. when I realized there was a lesson in every one of them, Mm -hmm. that was like any uncomfortable emotion is just a call to action for something that needs to change in your life. Every comfortable emotion is a reward for how you've been living your life. Mm. And so I took a look at anxiety and I asked, well, what is that? It means I care a lot about the future. Well, in the past, I was, every time anxiety would come up for me, it started with this little discomfort Mm. and I didn't like that feeling. So Mm. I kept pushing it away and I was like, I don't want this. I don't want this. Well, it's a Mm. cliche for a reason. Whatever you resist persists. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it wasn't until I realized that it was serving me that it got lighter. So think about what mm. happens when you feel anxiety. You make it wrong, and then you start getting anxious about your anxiety. You get mm. feelings about your feelings, right? Yeah. Or you get yeah. sad that you're depressed or angry yeah. that you're whatever it is. Frustrated and so, that your voice shouts at you. <laughs> exa- exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I started looking at it and said, well, what would happen if I just accepted Mm. that I was anxious. Mm. What if the key to getting rid of uncomfortable emotions was to welcome them? Mm. And so I started doing it. Mm. 
And I started, whenever these feelings of anxiety crept up in me, I said, huh, I must care a lot about the future. I'm feeling anxious right now. I'm experiencing anxiety. Mm. And all of a sudden, the anxiety dissipated. It got less and less and mm. less and lower because I didn't make it wrong. Mm. And that doesn't mean that we don't do anything to solve the challenge that triggered the anxiety. Mm. It just means that we're in a more optimistic, not positive, because mm. I think positivity mm. is often just as toxic as pessimism, but yeah. an optimistic state to actually solve the problem at hand. So yeah. I have a lot of feelings on what people label as negative emotions because I dealt with mm. so many of them. Mm. But I discovered that the key to helping them to dissipate is actually mm. to welcome them and not making them wrong. Is there a secret to knowing when you feel your feelings? Because I think so many of us go through, you know, we wake up in the morning, we go to sleep at night, and we don't spend a lot of time thinking about what am I actually feeling or analyzing it or observing it from a, you know, from a, like you say, you have this, you know, you observe it without judging it. Mm -hmm. Is there a secret to being able to feel those feelings and see them and look at them? Um, yeah. Talk to me about so, that. So absolutely. So try this. Mm. Everyone listening Put your body right now in a state of anxiety, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like, for like 30 seconds, you're not going to like this. Okay. Mm. So put your body in that state. What do you do with your head? Mm. What do you do with your eyes? What do you do with your breathing? Where do your shoulders go? Mm. What happens to the tension in your body? Mm. And now from this, actually do it when, unless you're yeah. like driving a car or something, do it with yeah. your body yeah, and I'm make the tension. It, you I'm feel it, right? It, yeah. Now, it's so easy to go there though. So easy. So, so easy. Because it's a trigger. Just, you just say it and I can like instantly put my body mm -hmm. there. Wow, it's yeah. scary. It's well, most people have a highway to pissed off and a dirt road to happiness. Their mind is wired for this emotion they practice the most often. And yeah. so in this state of anxiety or the the physical state there, mm -hmm. now focus on what you focus on when you're anxious. It's typically a result that hasn't happened yet, or the way mm -hmm. someone's acting, or a bank mm -hmm. account or something. And now make more tension with your body. Mm. You've just created anxiety, mm. right? And so now mm. shake it out. Yeah. Right? Well, shake it out. We don't like that. that please. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't feel good. <laughs> but the way to do it is to take note in those states of what happens in your body. Mm. And then the next time it comes on, you will feel it in your body as well. Mm. Um, I can expand on that more, but I think that's mm. a good starting no, point. No, I think that's a great, that's a great starting point. I remember... Um, I remember when I had the panic attack, the, the thing that, you know, the thing that was the truck that with the brick on that hit me was the, you know, was the heart palpitations. It was like, what in the heck is happening here? Because my heart is jumping out of my chest. And, and that was literally my body like going, you are, be I am hitting you with a truck because you have not listened to me for months and months and months. Um, and then, and then learning to listen to that, you know, learning to, to just step away for a moment and go, hang on, my stomach's doing the funny thing. Why am I, why am I anxious here? Or, oh, I see my brain chasing its tail today. What am I anxious about? But there's a, there's kind of an interruption that has to happen, right? Yes, there's absolutely an interruption that has to happen. And can I enroll everyone in why this is important for just a yeah, moment, especially do. in business. Yeah, um, yeah. Because a lot of times we think, especially as entrepreneurs, that if we just mm. force ourselves through something, mm. make ourselves take the action, mm. do the scary thing, then we're going to get the results. And that's a beautiful yeah. willpower, right? Mm. We have the ability to act and to go after it. Mm. Amazing quality, but it leads to this burnout state. So let's take a look at two different situations. Situation one you're in this anxiety, you're chasing your tail around, you're stressed out beyond mm. recognition, right? Mm. And you're trying to solve a problem from that state. Mm. It doesn't work. No. But if you, tr if you utilize different tools to eliminate this challenge or at least mitigate this challenge and show up to a problem in a much more empowered state, the second mm. option, you're more likely to have a faster solution, higher quality solution, and to have better results. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to, to interrupt the pattern, I have an interesting take on this. Mm. 
Any emotion that is not felt is trapped. Mm, I and so, that. and so if you think about your emotions, like almost like an artery, mm. every time you don't allow yourself to feel and express an emotion, it's like a plaque that builds up and mm. the blood that's flowing, the happiness, the joy, the gratitude there's less and less blood flow. So you experience it more often. You start to think something's broken about you, but there's mm. nothing broken about you and no one needs to fix you. Mm. It's just that we need to allow these emotions to finally release. And so when something triggers us, let's say, here's a good example. I learned this from, um, I forgot where I learned this, but let's say that you're driving down the highway. And you're taking in the trees and the sun and the other cars, and it's not doing anything whatsoever. It's just passing through you, right? But then you're driving down the highway and you see a blue Ford Mustang, the same make and model of the boyfriend that cheated on you in high school when you were 17. Yeah. Think about what happens to your state. Anxiety builds up, stress builds up. And even though all the trees, the cars, the sun, are, you're able to take them in and pass them by, you're not mm -hmm. there. You're fixated on that blue Mustang until something yeah. snaps you out of it. Because yeah. anytime anxiety or any uncomfortable emotion is triggered, it's typically because it is hitting a reference point of the past that yeah. hasn't energetically expressed itself. Yeah. And so if you are experiencing these emotions, one of the greatest things you can do is feel them. Mm. And so I have an acronym that I uh, teach a lot of our students. It's called RULER, and I'll give you the spark notes of it. Mm. R-U-L-E-R, -E something tactically you can use right now to better process uncomfortable emotions. So you can go and take the action on your business. So you can go and be a better parent, whatever it is. The R stands for recognize it. What am I feeling? Mm. Simple. Mm. The U stands for understand it. Okay, mm. am I actually stressed or am I overwhelmed? Am I overwhelmed mm. or am I hurt right mm. now? We Getting can to know what two things I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go through and figure yeah. out what it actually is. Mm. The L stands for label it. And that is mm. essentially the same thing as the R, just with more information. Those mm. first three letters take about 17 seconds. Mm. Then you get to the E. See, everyone wants to skip to the good part where you're grateful and happy mm. and all that mm. stuff. The E stands for express it, mm. but express it without consequence. Because if you're feeling anger, you could mm. yell at your kids and express it, mm. but that has consequence. Mm. But if you ever had a really good cry? Yes, often. And, and, <laughs> and you just feel lighter afterwards yeah. or a great swim, right? Yeah. And you feel better afterwards because yeah. you expressed the emotion without consequence. And mm. then you do what all the positive thinking people talk about, right? Yeah. Which is go and be grateful. Go and choose again. The R, the final R stands for regulate it. Yeah. But it's yeah. after you've expressed it that you can actually regulate it. So those are just yeah. from a very high level, one of the many tools that I teach our students on how to navigate those things. I love that so much. I'm so on board with that. I do the same. I have a similar thing. I use RAIN, which is a a um, meditation teacher taught me that. I forget her name now. But it's a similar recognize, acknowledge something, something I don't know, but then move through your body. Because what I tend to do when I feel anxiety, and I've noticed this, and I wonder if some of the listeners can probably associate that, is when we feel anxiety, what do we do? We sit behind our computers longer. <laughs> yeah. And what does that do? That just traps it in our bodies for even yeah. more. So I have a rule for myself. When I feel like I need to sit behind the computer longer, that's my red flag. That's, that is, that is like red flag is going up. Body is giving red flag. This is the brick coming through the window. Get up, go for a walk, get into your body. Yes. Like, like you say, name the emotion. What is it? Where is it coming from? Is it, you know, cause, cause sometimes I think when we don't do that, we just tend to create more problems. Yeah. So, 100%. Um, yeah. So this is really helpful. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Of course. Okay. So I want to go back to your story. So you went to this event. First, I, I, I have a question about the student date. Um, I know most of my listeners live in the US. There's a lot in, um, in other parts of the world as well. We've got Aussies and Kiwis and people in England and Europe and South Africa and everywhere. Is it normal for an American student to graduate with $90,000 debt? 
I don't know if 90,000 is the accurate number, but it yeah. is normal to graduate with what people would consider crippling debt. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it was so interesting. We were at um, a dinner with one of my wife's really good friends and there was a philosophy that I heard, which was mm. like, yeah, I'll be paying these off until I'm 60, right? Mm. Or this car payment, I'll be paying this off for the next 12 years mm. where debt and living in scarcity in some way is the accepted norm. Yeah. And that never sat yeah. well with me. But to answer your question, I think to some degree, I had a lot, but I think yeah. I want to say the number is typically around 30 or 40,000 is, is typically the number, something like that. Mm. So most, most entrepreneurs, let's say most of our listeners are in their um, most of my listeners are in their forties, even mm -hmm. in their fifties, most are women. So mm -hmm. they would have been married and let's assume that they didn't have, I want to say maybe, maybe the debt becomes an issue more for men than it is for women. For women, it's more around this. Well, you know, my kids are just leaving the, my kids are leaving the house or my kids are grown enough that now I can do something for myself and they start businesses uh, and, and, and they are desperate sometimes after following divorces, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, sometimes death. Um, they're desperate to get this business off the ground so that they can be financially independent in their 40s and 50s. So, so there's the anxiety that we are launched with uh, in our 20s with all this student debt. Mm -hmm. um, and I have my own version of that. I didn't have the anxiety of student debt because I didn't qualify for a loan in South Africa. So I ended up studying part time while I went and lived in London and and worked over there. And I ended up taking like five years to get my degree part time. But by the end of it, I was I had no debt, but I studied part time, which was a whole other level of stress, you know. Um, but but when we get to our 40s and 50s and and there's it seems like there's these generational triggers there's these generational things or situational things that are just themes that are similar similar thing that shows up in different ways so does your strategies work for 20 years old trying to get their businesses off the ground and and 40 something moms uh, who are just you know trying to create extra income for their family does it work for everybody at all these different stages Yes. And there's a reason why different root, different fruit. So root, if you, fruit. okay, if you go to an apple tree and mm. say, I really wish this was a pear tree, mm. you can hope and pray all day long. You can even glue pears on the apple tree mm. and it won't become a pear tree. You need to mm. dig up the apple tree and plant a pear tree and nurture that pear tree so that it grows and bears fruit. Mm. And so I have worked with at this stage, almost 60,000 people. Mm. And I have worked with people from 16, 15, 14 years old. And mm. my oldest clients are in their early eighties. Mm. Every single walk of life I have ever come across, whether it's an entrepreneur, a stay at home parent, a full-time corporate person, someone that is in college, any, you name it, it has mm. changed. And the reason why is because this is not about another just quick fix strategy to make mm. things a little bit better. It's mm. about changing the subconscious programming, the mm. limiting beliefs that are playing behind the scenes that are what cause you to take the actions you're taking and to, be mm. and to feel the things that you're feeling and therefore get the results that you're getting. And by the way, those results reinforce the beliefs that you already have. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about changing the route. So absolutely mm. it does. It's all mm. about going behind the scenes to what actually makes that person tick. Mm, mm. So you have worked with people of all walks of life in every situation and it always works because it addresses the roots. Yes. And can I, just to enroll people as to why that is, can I give an example? Yeah, yeah, yeah please um, do. It's easy for me to say that, mm. right? But let's play this out in real time. Mm. What you believe, well, let me start a different way. What's the potential of human beings? Virtually unlimited, right? We've gone to the moon, right? There's yeah. plenty of incredible things you can accomplish. So why don't we tap into that potential? We'll mm -hmm. get to that in a moment. But when we don't tap into that potential, we're told just take more action. Just do a different mm -hmm. step. 
Mm. But most people just grind and grind and grind or effort or even just emotionally effort Mm. so hard and don't get different results. Oh, that's true. And so if if working harder at what's not working were the key to success, then anyone that worked hard would have success. Mm. And that's clearly not the case. Mm. But watch this. The potential you tap into impacts the actions you do or don't take. Mm. And the actions you do or don't take will then determine the type of results that you're getting. So Mm. if I'm tapping into a one out of 10 in my potential, that's going to lead to a one or a zero out of 10 in my aligned action. Mm. That's going to lead to really poor results. So what's Mm. the genesis of all of this? It's what you believe, Mm. right? So I'll give you two side-by-side examples. Let's say I believe, just we'll talk about money because it's easy to measure. Let's say that I have a belief that says money is hard to make and once you have it, it disappears. Mm. Well, scale of one to 10, what potential are you tapping into if you believe that? It's like a negative five, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So something. you're going to take the same actions you've always taken. You're going to do the same things. You're going to associate with the same people. You're mm-hmm. going to avoid the same courageous things that you should have taken action mm-hmm. on before. And then you're going to get really poor financial results. Mm-hmm. Well, those financial results, what does that do to the belief you already have that mm-hmm. money is hard to make? It mm-hmm. reinforces it. Yeah. It makes it a conviction. It gets stronger. But at the mm. same time, if I believe that believe that success is my birthright, mm. 10 out of 10 potential, 10 out of 10 aligned action, 10 mm. out of 10 results, completely different circumstances because I took the risk. I got in the mm. room. I joined the program. It mm. changed my life. And then I get different results and it reinforces the belief that success is my birthright. Mm. This is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Yeah. It's because of what's going on behind the scenes, the belief systems that you have. And I can get into a whole thing on that and where those come from, but that's why it's so important to master this. And it impacts every single person in any walk of life because everyone's beliefs are different. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? It does. Yes. And do you think we are born with ours uh, or are they handed to us by our family and our circumstances or a combination of both? I have never seen a baby with beliefs. Ah. Um, (laughs) So we come into this world a blank slate, totally a blank slate. And throughout that time, we adopt beliefs and feelings of certainty from people that we thought we could trust. Mm. That in in all honesty, we're doing the best they could with what they knew how at the time. Mm. And then we also adopt beliefs from traumatic events. From when something traumatic happens in the brain, it links up what is different. And then Mm. the brain will distort and delete all the things around it. So we form this belief about life. It also creates beliefs when we're consistently exposed to something through repetition. And Mm. there's plenty of other ways that they happen as well, but those are the main ones. So I do not believe that they come from birth. I believe that Mm. we uh, adopt them over the course Mm. of time. And it's how we form our model of the world. Okay. Do you help people in your program? Do you help people define success on their own terms? Because I think you're right. Like we don't just the same way that we don't uh, come into this world with limiting beliefs. We also don't come into this world knowing exactly what we want and how Mm -hmm. our, you know, what our own definition of success is. If you ask a baby what their definition of success is, it's, you know, when am I getting my next feed? Or can someone please change my nappy? That's success, you know, (laughs) but, but we are, we are conditioned in school we are conditioned by a society that we live in. We're conditioned by a commercial, um, you know, um, capitalist society that we live in. Everything that all the systems that play in this world tells us who we should be and what matters mm-hmm. and, and, and tells us from a very young age uh, what we should want if we want to feel good enough, mm-hmm. right? So do you help people redefine what success is for them? That's literally one of the first tenets of everything we do. Because who the hell am I to tell you what you should want, right? It it doesn't make sense. And so everyone's definition is different. What matters is that what you define as success makes you come alive. That's what matters. And I always, I joke with people, if it doesn't make your butt pucker, play bigger. Ah. It's, it's the, so it's not about having a, a success based on what your partner thinks, what school yeah. taught you. It's what your heart really wants. And most people, when I bring that up, they say, well, what if you don't know what I want? What if I don't know what I want? That's one of the most common responses I get. And, and I, I have 
100% of the time, someone tells me that, I don't know what I want. They know what they want. They're just afraid of getting hurt again. Yeah. And so everyone knows what they want. They just need the right yeah. questions presented in the right way to bring it out of them. And once yeah. they know what that is, there it's like the chains break off their ankles and they can just go after it because nothing's holding them back anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, absolutely. It's all about identifying your unique definition of success, breaking the limiting beliefs that would prevent you from getting there, setting you up emotionally, and then taking mm -hmm. the actions to go after what you want most. Yeah. And that's just a skill that you learn. Mm -hmm. That's something you can read in a book, right? But all mm -hmm. this other stuff. And and what about identifying those blind spots? Like I feel like um, so much of this is just seeing what we don't see in ourselves, right? Yeah. Well, I'll give you a, a hint. This is one of the many techniques, but one of the best mm -hmm. ways to identify your blind spots is to see what happens in your psychology when you finally admit to yourself what you want. Because the minute you admit that, all of a sudden you're going, this, your brain will just go a million miles an hour about why it's not possible, right? Mm. Another way to take a look at your blind spots is, you know, how would you complete the sentence? Success is, money is, business is, right? Mm. A lot of, or if you succeed, then what will you lose? A lot of times people don't realize that they have these, the subconscious programming going on behind the scenes. Mm. Um, but identifying your blind spots typically becomes much easier when you've identified what you're after. I love that. I love that so much. I love it so much. And I, and I think there is so much to be said for um, doing the work to figure out the difference between what you really want and what you think you want, because yeah. that's how you've been conditioned. I think if we 100%. can all do that, if we can all do that, then we'd all be happier and we'd all be more fulfilled and we'd all have our own definitions of success. Brad, it's so nice talking to you. Is there, um, you've got your um, program coming up. You've got Success Accelerator is now open for enrollment. Um, I have uh, seen the content of Success Accelerator and I know you and your entire team gives and gives and gives and gives so much over the course of a few days uh, in that group. And uh, can you please tell us who is perfect for Success Accelerator? Absolutely. It's a great fit for you. First of all, what is it? It's a, it's a free five-day challenge that we have. It starts on Monday. Doors are open to it right now. And really, if you've ever wondered how some people seem to effortlessly succeed without all this stress and they're living amazing quality of lives while most people struggle and overwhelm and constant stress for years and years and years barely getting by, there's a reason. And we're going to unveil that reason in this program so that you can break through it forever. So if you're in a spot where you know something in your life needs to change, but you don't quite know what it is, and you're sitting there going, I know I'm made for more, but I have no idea what I would even do. Or if I did that, I don't even know if it would work. Or you might be in a spot where you're craving so much certainty. You want to know how it's going to go before you get started. So you read all of the books, study everything you get your hands on, and then it's met with inaction and fear. And you almost feel like your dream just becomes this consistent moving target and it never quite feels good enough. And you just bounce from this feeling of stress to a feeling of anxiety to a feeling of overwhelm, even though you're in the groups even though you're posting on the things, doing all the stuff you're supposed to do and you're consuming all the material and you start to wonder, like, you know, success is possible for you. You just have a hard time believing that success is possible because of everything that you've been through. So you know yeah. it's possible, but you have a hard time believing it's possible for you. Or if you're that person that's taking all the action, doing all the right things, and you might even have achieved something, but it doesn't feel like enough. And so you start to get in your head. What am I doing wrong? Is it worth it? And so if you deal with perfectionism, procrastination, ongoing stress, if you're trying so hard to get something off the ground and it hasn't happened and you're wondering why, if you've achieved something and you're not fulfilled, if you just know in your heart you're made for more and you want to finally find out what the heck is stopping you from getting it, this free five-day challenge will show you how to do it and how to shift these subconscious beliefs going on behind the scenes so that success becomes your default setting. In this challenge, you're going to identify exactly what you want and you're going to see what stopped you from getting it. And once you, once you know what that is, you can't go back. We have seen thousands and thousands of people 
radically transform their lives. We've seen people grow multiple six-figure businesses within six months. We've seen marriages heal. We've seen people finally feel happiness on the very first day of this challenge when they haven't experienced happiness in 20, 30 years. It is incredible what is possible in this program. It's totally free. It starts this coming Monday. Um, and it would be just such a privilege and an honor to serve you in there. So if you want to see how high performers achieve their goals so much faster than their peers with less stress and without just sacrificing all this time away from the people you love the most, highly recommend getting into that program. And you can join that program right now by going to thelaunchlounge.com forward slash success challenge. And I want to really invite you. You all know that I don't just promote anyone on here to you. I love and adore Brad. And I know Brad has um, a genuine heart of gold and all of this stuff that he preaches. He lives every single day. I've seen it for many, many years. So I would love to see you in there um, to learn from Brad and to discover how you can uh, also unlock your own definition of success and define your life on your terms. Go to thelaunchlounge.com forward slash success challenge. Brad, thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to serve your audience. And I just trust that people got some great value out of today. I know that they did. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. 